Hello viewers, welcome to Newspeak South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Peshawar school terror attack victims await justice six years after massacre. Pakistan to pay 1.5 lakh per month to Mumbai attack mastermind Zakir Rahman Lakhvi. And Indian security forces foil Pakistan's plot of disrupting peace in Kashmir. Pakistan observed the sixth anniversary of the gruesome terrorist attack on the Army Public School in Peshawar. The attack on APS was supposed to be a turning point in the history of the country to target the terror groups. Unfortunately, nothing much has improved in these years as Pakistan continues to remain a safe haven for several terror organizations. December 16, 2014, some 132 school children were massacred in one of the deadliest terrorist attacks in Pakistan's history. Gunmen stormed the army public school in Peshawar cantonment and opened indiscriminate fire on these students. Pakistan has since witnessed brazen attacks on educational institutes such as the 2016 assault on the Bacha Khan University in Char Sadda, in which 20 were killed. But the country has learned nothing from these attacks and people are scared of facing similar threats in future. Unfortunately, on the day of commemorating the anniversary of Peshawar school attack, Pakistan hosted the Taliban delegation for talks in Islamabad. Prime Minister Imran Khan's advisor on national security, Moed Yusuf, also faced criticism within his own country for claiming that India was linked to the 2014 terrorist assault on APS, an attack which the Tehrik e Taliban claimed the responsibility. It's a desperate attempt to look away from the monster of terror that Pakistan itself created in its quest. This shameless claim is being made by Pakistan at the time when parents of the victims of the Peshawar Army Public School want to know the whereabouts of Ehsanullah Ehsan, the mastermind and former spokesperson of Tehreek e Taliban. Ehsan escaped from a prison in Pakistan in February this year. Mr. Mohid Yusuf, the National Security Advisor to Prime Minister of Pakistan, is well known for his spread of disinformation, particularly with facts related to India. In the past, in an interview, he had claimed that the Indian establishment had reached out to Pakistan for holding talks and negotiations, which has been completely denied and was untruth. In the instance case also, he wants to spread the disinformation that India is involved in the ghastly attack on the Army Public School in Pakistan in 2014. In response to the attack, the then Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif lifted the moratorium on capital punishment in terrorism-related cases and established a 20-point counter-terrorism policy measure called the National Action Plan. There was hope that this event would finally galvanize Pakistani leadership into treating all groups who kill innocent civilians as terrorists rather than a means to achieving foreign policy objectives. Unfortunately, since then, Pakistan starts distinguishing between good and bad Taliban. Many Taliban leaders and other terrorists were released since then. A Pakistani court had permitted Zakir Rahman Lakhvi, a senior Lashkar-e-Taiba commander, 
who allegedly planned the Mumbai terror attacks in 2009 to be released on bail. There is a myth that there is good and bad Taliban. Pakistan army would like to portray that there are some good and bad Taliban. We must be clear that Taliban which is indulging in violence continues to remain a bad Taliban and just by holding talks with the Af Afghan negotiators or previously with the United States, it does not give, label them as a good Taliban. For being converted to be called from bad to good Taliban, they have to give up violence. No extremist organization which indulges in violence can be can have the adjective or the prefix good. So let's be very clear. Taliban remains a very bad organization till it joins the mainstream and give up violence. A number of radical Islamist groups and terror outfits continue to operate across Pakistan and many of them have close relations with the security agencies. The National Action Plan even failed to eliminate terrorists from Pakistani soil. It is rather misused against civilians in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Balochistan and other tribal areas. The army has been targeting innocent civilians, burning their houses and kidnapping the youth by falsely blaming them as terrorists and anti-national. It's been six years of Peshawar school massacre and the victims are still waiting for justice. They see no ray of hope. Pakistan, the epicenter of terrorism, is not shying away from openly channelizing the system of terror funding and is taking every possible measure to provide funds to terror leaders residing in the country. In yet another move, Pakistan is set to pay 1.5 lakh rupees a month to lashkar e taibas leader Zakir Rahman Lakhvi and Mahmood Sultan Bashiruddin, a Pakistani nuclear engineer. Both have been listed by the UN as international terrorists. The revelation has also brought to light the double standard Pakistan has been pursuing to safeguard terrorists under the garb of fake crackdown on terror outfits. Pakistan has always masked its backing of terrorism by the pretense of crackdowns and public outcry against New Delhi. However, a move to put forth a request for specially designated global terrorists makes Islamabad's stance against terror fall flat on the face. Keeping all the guidelines and recommendations of Financial Action Task Force at bay, Imran Khan recently got formal permission from United Nations Security Council to pay monthly expenses to 2611 Mumbai attack planner Zakiur Rahman Lakhvi and Mahmood Sultan Bashiruddin, who is under scanner for his meeting with deceased Al Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden. Lakhvi has been out on bail since 2015 and enjoying a VIP treatment from Pakistan's establishment. Even the time he spent in a Pakistani jail was just eyewash as he had access to all facilities, held his meetings with people from outside and had even fathered a child while at jail in Rawalpindi. Members of the Security Council are alive to the fact that nations like Pakistan play strange games. They make millions available to likes of Zakir Lakhvi for carrying out behem and chaos against India. Under these circumstances, if the United Nations Security Council had not sanctioned 1.5 lakhs, it would have made no difference whatsoever to Lakhvi or to Pakistan. They, were, they continue to spend enormous amounts of money on him. This is not the first time that Pakistan has shown its love for terrorism. Pakistan had gone to United Nations Security Council for 2611 Mumbai attack planner Hafiz Said in 2019 to get his basic expense with the body approving Islamabad's request. But the question arises that why these dreaded terrorists who are responsible for heinous crimes need such an enormous amount every month as just basic expense. 
rupees 1.5 lakh seems substantial amount for a country where the cost of basic needs was estimated to be just rupees 3250.3 per adult per month by Pakistan's planning commission it is well understood that the access to finance is aimed at smoothing out the terror activities commanded by these terror leaders. Like Lakhvi, Hafiz Saeed as well as Masood Azhar are national strategic assets of Pakistan who actually have been put in place by Pakistani army and the ISI to carry out mega nefarious activities against India as well as Afghanistan. They are scared of being blacklisted by FATF, under the circumstances they take cosmetic actions. If the world really wants to rein them in, stronger sanctions against Pakistan ought to be imposed, otherwise Pakistan will carry on with such activities. Pakistan's decisions and policies are framed for the welfare of terrorists who are living under the patronage of Pakistani deep state and the federal government. In August, before FATF's meeting, Pakistan imposed financial sanctions on 88 banned terror groups, including Hafiz Said, Masood Azhar, Dawood Ibrahim, and Zakir Rahman Lakhvi. However, in November, Pakistan's federal investigative agency's updated list of most wanted omitted the mastermind and key conspirators of the heinous Mumbai terror attacks. For years, India has been demanding Pakistan to bring the real perpetrators of attacks to justice and hand over Hafiz Said to New Delhi. But in order to keep him safe in the country, Pakistan keeps taking pseudo actions against Said and has sentenced him several times in terror financing cases by its so called anti terrorism court. Going on the same routes, Hafiz Said was once again awarded a 10-year jail term in two terror financing cases in November this year. As expected, despite being sentenced for 10 years in terror financing cases, Pakistan has quietly shifted Hafiz Said to his house in Lahore from Kot Lakhpat jail where he continues to run lashkar e taiba The Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir is moving fast towards peace and prosperity. People are happy in the region, but someone is envious of this development. This someone is none other than India's hostile neighbour Pakistan, which is consistently making efforts to hamper peace and accord in the region. Regular infiltration attempts and attacks on security forces Civilians and candidates during DDC elections in Jammu and Kashmir have once again exposed Pakistan's nefarious designs wherein it is attempting to directly target the basic democratic structure of Jammu and Kashmir in order to evoke a sense of fear and anxiety among the civilians and local political leaders. A report. Hours of relentless exchange of bullets killed two terrorists from Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba in Poonch region of Jammu and Kashmir, while one was caught alive from the encounter site. The three Pakistani terrorists were believed to have infiltrated into Kashmir from across the line of control about three days ago, and were heading for South Kashmir's Shopian district, where they were nabbed in a snowbound area. They were asked to surrender, but they refused and instead fired indiscriminately on the security forces, resulting in an exchange of gunfire. A huge cache of explosives, electronic items and arms and ammunition was also recovered from them. When the operation was in its final stage, the police and police were जो हमारी घेरा बंदी के अंदर टेररिस्ट थे, उनको सरेंडर करने का पूरा मौका दिया, और ये मुहिम कम से कम तीन से चार घंटे तक चली। नतीजतन एक टेररिस्ट एसोसिएट जो वहाँ से बचके निकलने की कोशिश कर रहा था, उसे सही सलामत गिरफ्तार किया गया, और उसके बाद भी दोबारा जो बाकी दो टेररिस्ट फंसे हुए थे, उनको बार-बार ये कहा गया, हिदायत दी गई कि आप सरेंडर कर दें। जब काफी देर के बाद उन्होंने इसपे कोई अमल नहीं दिखाया, तो नतीजतन उन्होंने 
हमारी पार्टीज पे फायरिंग ओपन कर दी जिसके नतीजे में एनकाउंटर इंस्यू हुआ ये कल शाम को एनकाउंटर अपने अख्ताम को पहुंचा जिसमें दोनों टेररिस्ट जो है वो न्यूट्रलाइज कर दिए गए और एक टेररिस्ट एसोसिएट जो है वो गिरफ्तार किया गया अथॉरिटीज से that pakistan is sending terrorists to harm the flourishing grassroots democracy and development in the region during the ongoing district development council elections in kashmir pakistan sponsored terrorists have targeted indian security forces civilians as well as election candidates held peacefully in eight different phases ddc elections have not only consolidated the fact that democracy is thriving in the union territory but have also busted the lies of pakistan which wrecks up kashmir at any and every possible opportunity we are going through a very important excise uh, throughout the state and the excise is an excise in democracy at the grassroots level enthusiasm of the people with the, which they are coming out and participating in the elections is commendable it's a big exercise as i said movement has to be ensured so among a very large scale movement of the people you have a hidden movement of an odd anti-national element coming to city or coming to some other place just today only you have had an incident in punch where Lashkar-e Toiba group of terrorists was sent from Pakistan but we have got enough evidence with us in incriminating Pakistan in not only training people sending terrorist outfits to this side of uh, India to disturb the ongoing process this incident also is uh, part of the same uh, design part of the same conspiracy to achieve its nefarious agendas Pakistan does not even shy away from hurting the innocent civilians of Jammu and Kashmir. These civilians who have been the direct victims of Pakistan's mischief in the valley are now extending all possible support to Indian forces in Kashmir. बहुत परेशानी हम अपनी परेशानी तो किसी को बता ही भी नहीं सकते हैं क्योंकि हमारा जो गांव है ये बॉर्डर एरिया है बॉर्डर एरिया पे डेली फायर होता है ये नहीं कि एक दिन होता है डेली होता है हम लोगों का नुकसान होता है गवर्नमेंट ने हमको बंकर भी बना के दिए सब कुछ किया होगा हम नहीं कहते हैं कि गवर्नमेंट ने कुछ भी नहीं किया क्योंकि मान लो अभी हम सब लोग यहाँ पे खड़े हैं ठीक है अभी पाकिस्तान वाले फायर करेंगे तो हम यहाँ से भाग के बंकर में जा सकते हैं क्या नहीं जा सकते हैं Pakistan which has failed miserably at subverting peace in India's Jammu and Kashmir is now trying to hit India from different corners. The border security force recently shot down two armed terrorists along the Pakistan border in Amritsar district of Punjab and recovered weapons and Pakistani currency from them. Frustrated by its failures at fomenting trouble in India, Pakistan is using all tricks in its book to unleash violence in the country but vigilant indian security forces have been successfully thwarting all its mischievous agendas now we talk about zakir abdul karim naik an indian islamic preacher who is an alleged criminal absconder in charges related to alleged funding terror activities hate speech and inciting communal hatred He fled from India in 2016 and now is based in Malaysia. In a major development, Indian intelligence agencies have unearthed the nefarious agenda of a Malaysia-based Rohingya terror outfit which wants to carry out attacks in India. The agencies have intercepted financial transactions made by this group for orchestrating terror strikes in the country. Notably, transactions have been found with links to Dr. Zakir Naik, a report. Indian security agencies have alerted that controversial hate preacher Dr. Zakir Naik along with some Rohingya leaders is planning attacks in India. For this, 2 lakh dollars have been sent from Zakir Naik's bank account. The transaction is being linked 
to a Chennai based suspicious Hawala activity. The intelligence report suggests that a woman led group who has been trained in Myanmar may attempt to infiltrate before December end. Apart from exposing the anti India alliance of Zakir Naik and Rohingyas, the report has also claimed that members of Popular Front of India, a Kerala based radical outfit, are also involved in this conspiracy. He is a fundamentalist. He will certainly make all possible efforts on all fronts, in all directions, to keep that kind of sentiments, you know, uh, uh, very much afloat so that the people, and so whether it's a Rohingya, whether some other, you know, people who are adversely affected and who become vulnerable and can be easily, you know, uh, won over and brainwashed. So he will continue to do, but to what extent he'll be able to finance, I do not know because ultimately he also has to get money from, he doesn't have money of his own. He'll have to manage the money from other places. July 26, Dhaka terror attack was the inflection point in Zakir Abdul Karim Naik's life. Within hours, he fled India. One of the bombers involved in the attack had told Bangladeshi investigators that he was influenced by Zakir's preaching through his YouTube channel. The controversial Islamic preacher found safe haven in Malaysia, a country where a former prime minister without any hesitation tweets that Muslims have a right to be angry and to kill millions of French people for the massacres of the past. Although Zakir is wanted in India for his links with terror activities and money laundering, Malaysia has refused to extradite the Islamic preacher on the grounds that he might not receive a fair trial. The medical graduate turned hate preacher has been given permanent resident status in India's neighboring country, where his anti-Malaysian Hindu remarks had sparked row last year. Recently, this hate-mongering element had instigated the Gulf countries to put non-Muslim Indians in jail as and when they arrive there in case they insult Islam or the Prophet. He also asked them to create a database of such Indians so that they can be booked when they visit their countries. Although India may step up pressure for his extradition, but his deportation doesn't seem to be an easy task as he is residing in a country where a public university had declared him as icon of the Islamic world in a university question paper. The complex political nature surrounding Nayak is making the extradition difficult. Now this, the uh, Motiyar Muhammad government changed and now Mohuddin has come in. And Mohuddin has now got again, his party's base is more on the Muslim side. And therefore he is treading very cautiously. He does not want to offend his political base. So he is treading very, very, very cautiously on this uh, aspect of extraditing Zakir Naik. However, we are very confident that it will be done because th this man is a controversial man who is already banned in so many countries. Intelligence Bureau on various occasions has alerted that Nike's organization Peace TV and its social handles are engaged in recruiting and radicalizing Muslim youths. Not only that, but the IB reports time and again have exposed that Nike's outfit has close links with the jihadi groups and gets regular funding from the Arab countries for executing the jihadi propaganda in India. Now this criminal absconder along with some Rohingyas has aligned with the members of Popular Front of India, an organization which is considered as an offshoot of the banned students Islamic Front of India. In the name of uplifting the marginalized and backward sections of the society through various programs, PFI is engaged in various kinds of anti-Indian activities and this is the reason why it is currently under the National Investigation Agency scanner and is being examined by different agencies in India. The report has also highlighted the threats posed by the Rohingyas who have not been all innocent as proclaimed by the global stakeholders and harbingers of humanity. It is worth mentioning here that the international media has deliberately or ignorantly veiled the other side of Rohingyas. For India, which is host to thousands of illegal Rohingya immigrants, it's of great importance to clear the smog and walk the path of clarity and reality. 
And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at nin.com. This is Shreya Savage signing off on the behalf of entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.